And welcome back. I hope you're all doing well. So this morning, we're going to take some time to take a look at a Python script that I put together to help me with my crypto trading adventures. Now, I know that a lot of Linux users out there are also heavily into crypto as well. Uh, so I hope you get some value out of this. And of course, uh, when we're finished with this video, I will take the Python script and all the associated files and instructions and put them on my GitHub. And then I'll put that link in the uh, description below. So a little bit about me before we get into it. Um, I do... Uh, I invest in crypto in two ways. I primarily swing trade and I do some uh, day trading. So the day trading, I focus on meme coins primarily uh, because of the volatility. And then for swing trading, uh, and for those of you who don't know, swing trading is when you buy an asset and you hold it for two or three days, maybe two weeks, and then you sell it. Uh, I do swing trading mostly for uh, coins like Ethereum, uh, Solana, XRP, uh, so on and so forth. Okay, so the video is going to be in two parts. Uh, first, we'll take a quick tour of the app, and then I'll open up known boxes and walk you through how to set it up on your machine if you so choose. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the app, show applications, and then click on the application icon, which is Rave's Crypto Console. And it's going to open and default to Trading View. So the app itself is essentially just a collection of different embedded web pages, really. Uh, so we have Trading View here. Uh, this does require an account. There's a free, uh, a free account, which is what I use. It lets you have up to, I think, three indicators. Um, I like using the EMAs, the volume, and the MACD. Uh, you can change those if you so choose by coming into, by clicking on indicators, coming in here, and then uh, finding the indicator that you want, and then activating it. To remove indicators, you can simply come up here, hover over that particular indicator, go over to the trash can, click it, and it's gone. This is not meant to be a class on how to use TradingView. There's plenty of resources out there. I just wanted to show you that uh, that it is part of the application. And we do have a training journal. So when you click on trading journal, it'll open up your particular spreadsheet. Um, I'm using LibreOffice Calc. And uh, we'll talk more about how to change that if you're not using LibreOffice and the actual script itself. Uh, but this is something you can pull up to sort of keep track of the date you made the trade, the coin or token, the purchase price, so on and so forth. And then we have news and information. Uh, so I use two sources primarily. I use uh, Crypto Panic and CoinStats. So Crypto Panic uh, does require, it doesn't require it, but there is a, a login option for it. It's, so I use the throwaway email address for that. And then CoinStats, you simply click on the CoinStats option and it'll populate the main page with that page as well. Uh, nothing too terribly fancy. We do have an AI assistant which is chat GPT. Uh, I know that Gronk is, uh, or Grok is better at mathematics and analytics than chat GPT, but I don't use it for that because chat GPT is very good at uh, compiling information from different sources. So I use it to ask questions like checking on the overview, the legal status for XRP for what's going on right now with the tariffs and so on. And we do have a calculator. So you click on the calculator and this just pulls up GNOME calculator uh, from my desktop environment. And then we have the references. So the references opens up a folder and that folder contains several PDFs talking about different topics. We have indicators, uh, the difference between the EMAs and the MACD, uh, crypto trading glossary to so open that up. It kind of has some of the more popular uh, terms and then what those terms mean, definitions basically. Uh, you can delete these if you want and put your own notes in there or leave them in there and add to them. It's completely up to you. But I do think it's a great way to sort of refresh yourself on maybe you want to check out the candlestick cheat sheet and talks a little bit about the bullish candlestick patterns, the uh, indecisive patterns, and so on and so forth. Now we'll come over to the research. Uh, I click on the research button and it brings up uh, CoinGecko, uh, which is fantastic, I think, um, for a research platform, research website. And of course, you can filter by uh, percent gain um, within the past hour, 24 hours, seven days, the volume and the market cap and so on. But if you're interested in swing trading or even holding a particular uh, asset for an extended period of time, it's always recommended to do some background on that. And if you click on XRP for just for an example, um, this site does give you a lot of information. So you can scroll down underneath the uh, prices and it goes into uh, talking about Ripple a privately held uh, fintech company that provides a global payment solution, et cetera. What the XRP ledger is, how does it reach consensus if there's no mining? We'll click on more, I'll read more. And the difference between XRP, XRP ledger, Ripple, and the Ripple network, uh, who created Ripple, 
um, so on and so forth. So a lot of really good background information about your particular asset. So highly recommended, especially if you are going to hold a hold a coin for more than a couple of days. And then finally, we go into the about tab, and that just simply has the license agreement here, um, basically saying that you know you're free to use this as you so choose. Just don't make minor changes, then claim it's your work, or repackage it and then try to sell it for a profit. Remember, support FOSS, keep it open, keep it real, and keep it free. And uh, this email address is my junk email, so I'm not too terribly worried about displaying that for the public. But anyway, all right, so let's go ahead and close out of this, and then we'll go into our boxes. And we already have our instance of Linux Mint installed. They're up and running. So to get this uh, set up on our machine, um, I'm going to go ahead and open up a terminal and do a quick sudo apt update put in my password and let it run all right so it looks like we have one package we upgraded i'll do that later go ahead and close out of this now when you download the files from the github you want to put them in a folder uh, somewhere on your machine on my host machine, I keep them in my documents. On this machine, I'm going to leave them in the home directory since this is just a, a how-to guide. So let's go into the console folder, uh, Crypto Console. And there should be uh, three folders, a Python file, and then a spreadsheet. So in the images, we have the logo that goes into the About section of the app. And then we have our launcher uh, PNG. Of course, you can change that to whatever you like. Um, download a different PNG if you so choose. Going back to the Crypto Console, we have installation. Uh, we have the bash file that'll uh, install all of our dependencies that we're going to need. And then we have uh, desktop launcher instructions. And then references. Uh, this is the folder containing all those PDFs we looked at uh, earlier. Back to the Crypto Console. And here's our Python script. So we are going to need to make some changes to this. And uh, we'll go through those changes here momentarily. I'm going to close this out and then we have our spreadsheet. Okay, so the first thing I want to do is change the dark theme. So I'm going to come down and look for preferences, scroll down to themes and change the dark theme and close that out. All right, so step one is going to be to install our dependencies before we do anything else. So let's go to our installation file. Let's go ahead and open up the, uh, the bash file with some instructions. So I have some notes and instructions in here that you can read through. Uh, basically what we want to do is copy this file, go back to our crypto console main folder, paste it in here, and we need to rename it. We're going to rename it to install underscore crypto underscore console dot sh. Hit enter. And then right click anywhere inside the folder in here and open with terminal, open in terminal. And let's do a list. So we have install underscore crypto underscore console dot sh. Let's do a ch mod uh, plus x. And then install underscore crypto underscore console dot sh. And we're good to go. So let's go ahead and go through the installation process. All right, so I've already gone through this. I wanted to test the bash file before uh, putting up on the GitHub. It does work. So to execute it, we're going to hit uh, dot forward slash install underscore crypto underscore console dot sh. Let me widen this a little bit so I can make sure it's all right. And it is. Hit enter, put in our password, and it's going to go through and install all the dependencies uh, without having to do anything. Now, this has already been done, so this will take you a couple of minutes to go through the entire process. So since we're in here, let's go ahead and clear this out, and let's go ahead and test the app and make sure it works. So you want to type Python 3, the space crypto... console.py, hit enter, and the app works great. Now it is kind of slow loading here because we are on a virtual machine and we've only got 16 gigabytes of RAM dedicated to this box. So the app does work. We open up our trading journal. It's going to bring up 
our spreadsheet. We can close that out. We'll go to news and information. It does load both sites. It loads the AI. We do have access to the calculator. References doesn't load yet, and we'll fix that here in a moment. Research, that also loads as well. And about, and I'm missing the, uh, the main icon. So the app does work, so let's go ahead and close it out. Dependencies were successfully installed. Go ahead and close out of our terminal. Now let's open up our uh, Python script. Let's make a few changes. So we need to find the path of logo, which is right here. Um, and this was in my on my host machine, uh, home, rave, documents, crypto, day trader, etc. So let's go ahead and change that. Go back here, go to our images, right click on the logo, go to properties, and get the entire path. Just copy it. And the name of the PNG is rave underscore app underscore logo. So we'll close that out. Remember that. Just minimize that for now. So rave underscore app logo. So the PNG file is correctly named already. So we're just going to backspace, clear out part of the script, and then we're going to paste in the correct address. Now let's uh, save it. Now we need to change the path to the folder where the references are kept. And that's down here. Uh, folder path. Again, we have home, rave, documents, crypto, day trader, references. That's not correct on this machine. So let's go back into our folder, back to our crypto console, references. Just right click, go to properties. Go ahead and copy that path. Close that out. Close that out. And let's go ahead and alter this script. Leave forward slash references there because the folder is uh, the same name and paste in the new address or the new path. Then we'll save it. Let's close it out. Oh, I shouldn't have closed out the entire folder. My bad. Go back into the crypto console folder, right click, open with terminal, and let's retest the application. Just press the up arrow and it'll repopulate the command. Hit enter and start it up. Let's open references. And it does work, so that fix has been implemented. And let's check the About page. And there's our logo. All right, so we're good to go on that. Now, before we get into the uh, installation of the launcher, let's reopen the Python script. And I have some notes in here if you want to make some changes. So let's go back up to the top. And uh, first of all, if you are not a fan of Crypto Panic or CoinStats, you can change those URLs under the, uh, in the Lambda function. Uh, to whatever sites that you want to use. And then I would take one of these addresses and come up here to the set URL uh, for the news view and then change that as well. So when you click on that button in the application, that'll be the website that first populates. And let's scroll a little bit further. And also if you want to change your, um, your research website, if you don't like CoinGecko, you can change that down here as well. And there's a little note up here that tells you what to do. And then scrolling down a little bit further, there's some more comments. Um, okay, so if you're not using LibreOffice, uh, you're using something different, you can go ahead and make those changes here in that sub process. Uh, the instructions are right here. I've commented out the instructions, obviously, but I'm using an ODS file. You may be using something completely different. If so, change the name and file extension below under sub process dot poppin. And we've already done this. We've uh, changed the path to the folder containing the uh, references. And that's pretty much it. So feel free to make any changes to this um, script as you so as you so choose. Um, completely up to you. Let's go ahead and close that out. And let's go ahead and jump into installing our launcher. Okay, so to get the launcher installed, it's a pretty easy process. Uh, what we need to do is go into our installation folder. Let's open up our desktop launcher instructions. And move that over a little bit. So the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we have a directory called icons in our local share. So the easiest way to do this is just to go to your home directory. If you're in a Linux Mint and you're using Cinnamon, go up to View, and then go down to Show Hidden Files. I already have it checked. And then go to Local, go to Share. And there is, in fact, a folder called Icons. If there's not, create one. Open up. There's nothing in there. So rather than using the terminal to copy and paste the icon into it, or the PNG file, rather, I just go back to my home directory, uh, go to my crypto console, go to images, 
uh, grab the PNG I want, which we're going to use the uh, Solana uh, launcher PNG. Go back to the home directory, go into our local, to our share, to our icons, and just paste it in there. All right, so we're going to close this out. And we're going to open up a terminal. And in that terminal, we're going to copy a couple of commands. We're going to create our .desktop launcher. So we're going to use nano for that. So just copy that command, paste it in your terminal, hit enter. And then we're going to copy this, uh, do several lines of commands beneath it, starting with desktop entry and going down to categories. Paste it in here. Now we need to make a couple of changes in here for this to work. Uh, first of all, the icon address is not correct. So we need to go up here. We're going to change that. The easiest way is to go back into our shared, our local shared directory, go to icons, right click on the PNG, go to properties, and just copy that path. And we're going to paste it in our nano. Whoops. So used to hitting control V, I forget, doesn't always work. Paste, and then we're gonna do forward slash, and then the name of the PNG. This is case sensitive, so keep that in mind. Launcher.png. And then we need to change the path to our executable. So obviously it's not in home rave documents. So we're gonna go and fix this. So we'll go back into our crypto console directory, right click, go to properties and forward slash copy the location, forward slash home, forward slash Tanjiro. We'll then close out of that. And then we'll just paste it in here. Do a forward slash crypto console forward slash. Now we need to put parentheses around this because we do have a space between crypto and console. So if you do not put the parentheses or the quote, I'm sorry, quotation marks, not parentheses. So put your quotation marks in before the forward slash of home and then after the Y and PY and hit control X, hit yes to save, hit enter. Go ahead and close out of this uh, directory, close out of our, oh, we gotta do one more thing. We need to make it executable. So we're going to copy the chmod command, paste it into our terminal, hit enter, and let's go ahead and update our desktop database. Copy that, paste it in here, hit enter. Now let's check and see if it actually worked. Come to all applications, we'll scroll down. And there's our Rave Crypto Console. Click it. And it works. All right, so that's going to wrap up the video. Um, I thank you all for watching, and I hope you've gotten some value out of this. If you did, uh, please consider leaving a like, as it does help me in the algorithm, supposedly. And uh, again, I will have this put up on the GitHub here uh, fairly soon after uploading this video. Uh, feel free to grab the code, uh, do what you will with it, and um, look forward to seeing the next video. So the next video, I am going to be going back to the Steam library playthrough. I have collected enough new games that I can, I can justify putting together um, a quick video on that. So uh, expect that coming up uh, maybe in the next few days by mid next week or mid, yeah, mid this week, actually, since uh, today's Sunday. Anyway, um, stay safe out there. Uh, have a good one and I hope to see you soon.